This is Robert with Pioneer Smokehouses, and today we're going to be doing smoked salmon in my Smoke Hollow analog smoker. And uh, basically, what we have here is a uh, simple, affordable model that pretty much anybody can start and learn to use. The nice thing about this model, compared to a lot of the other beginning models in that price range, is that it does have the ability to adjust its temperature. Um, now I haven't used every single model in that price range and my personal smoker that I use on a regular basis over here is a master built and it has a lot of controls and options that um, one of these basic ones just doesn't have. But this is a great place to start and the nice thing about this price range is that if you choose to make modifications like if you want to make it into a cold smoker or something like that, you're not spending a bunch of money to ruin your machine so and when I say ruin not every modification works out I've cut holes in uh, Big Chiefs before that I wish I didn't cut because of changing the airflow to the machine anyway so we've got the smoker going and warming up right now and uh, we're gonna cut to uh, another little video that I did earlier or yesterday where I actually prepped the salmon by making the brine so let's go ahead and watch that real quick Okay, so normally I don't shoot inside, but I wanted to uh, give you a rundown of how I make the brine. And so I'm going to put a picture up here, and uh, we'll go over that really quick. So we have uh, salt, and uh, in the picture here you see that there is some uh, pickling salt, which is my preferred salt to use because it dissolves fast because the crystals are smaller. If you don't have pickling salt, you can use any non-iodized salt. Uh, I usually use a regular container of sea salt and then I just put it in the food processor and pulse it three times and uh, it breaks up the crystals and so they dissolve really quick. Then what we do is we take uh, one pound of brown sugar and eight ounces of honey and we put them all in the pan here. And then we take a can of pineapple juice, 46 ounces, and we pour two thirds of it in and we bring it to a simmer. So what we want is we want it to get to a full temperature so all the salt and the sugar dissolve. And then once that happens, I'll usually stir it around a few times and put the lid on. Um, and by doing that, it keeps the crystals off the side of the pan because of the steam. And then once it's done that completely, I'll pour, I'll remove it from the heat, pour the rest of the pineapple juice in, and then I'll take it and put it in the um, freezer for about an hour. It needs to be at 40 degrees or less, so that way we don't actually uh, cook the salmon or grow any bacteria. So then, I'll show you. Here, I have a Ziploc bag full of salmon. When I uh, clean my salmon, I cut it down into pieces. I'm going to go ahead and show you one of those pieces right now, and then I'm going to put them in there. There is a little bit of liquid in the bag, but that's from freezing without getting all the air out. Normally, I would vacuum seal all my stuff, but I figured it was only going to be a week, so I did not do that. So, you can see here, this piece is about two inches wide. I just took and filleted the whole salmon out, and it wasn't a huge salmon, and then um, it was also um, a low river salmon, so it wasn't exactly the best quality meat, uh, but it'll work great for smoking. So, cut it two inches wide. And then I just put it in here and you want it completely thawed before you put it in. You don't want to put in frozen salmon for two reasons. Um, the main reason is, is that you'll get water in there, but also uh, you won't get the cure to penetrate the salmon. It'll only just penetrate the outside edge or whatever thaws while you're curing. So because I trimmed off a lot of the uh, stuff that I didn't want, I pretty much only have this amount here to go in the uh, pan, which is a perfect amount for a small smoker, which is what we're going to be smoking this on. Now this needs to soak for at least eight hours. After four hours, I'm going to uh, turn all the salmon over. I'll make sure that it's completely covered, and then I'll just pop it in the fridge. And uh, 
You can also leave it in a cooler full of ice if you don't have room for your fridge or you don't want to take the chance of having your fridge smell like smoke. I mean, uh, excuse me, smell like fish. So uh, we'll go ahead and pause that there and then the next time you see we'll be uh, going into the smoker. So fast forward 24 hours from when I did the salmon brine. Um, you never want to go over 24 hours because the salt will just over cure the salmon and um, also I do go really light on my salt so you can go higher on salt which will give it a more cured effect and that time factor you can actually end up almost completely cooking your salmon and if you're gonna cold smoke which I do not recommend at home by the way if you are going to cold smoke you'll need to use more salt or um, something like prog powder and you can uh, find more information on my website about prog powder and uh, how it's used for different things so first thing um, I'm gonna show you a couple pictures I dress the salmon with a little bit of uh, brown sugar and uh, then I put a small amount of honey on it but before I put the honey on I rub the brown sugar in a little bit and you can see in the picture there with the honey that the brown sugar is spread out. Over time, it will kind of melt away. I don't like, after I remove the um, salmon, I do not like to dry it. That um, process is called forming a pelicine layer, a layer, excuse me. And um, there's pluses and minuses to that, but I find that the minuses are outweigh the pluses. This is a protein layer that forms on the outside of your fish. The proteins come to the surface. It gets real tacky, so the nice thing about it is that the smoke will stick to it really well. But the problem is, is that it creates that surface and prevents your smoke from penetrating your salmon. Now, it does decrease your actual cook time, and you can go up a little bit higher in temperature and just literally dry the salmon through and cook it through. But what I want is I want that smoky flavor to penetrate. So I do not want to do that. So it comes right out of the brine, it gets dressed, and it goes into the smoker as soon as possible. So here's the trays that you just saw in the picture here. And uh, you can see that I laid the salmon out on the grill mats that I talk about quite frequently. And this is great because you can put this on this and put it on some sort of a tray for the smaller smokers. I just use a square plate. Uh, for the larger smokers, I use the uh, cookie sheet or even the back of the cookie sheet because then you can slide it off at the ridges. You just have to watch out for drips. So I have positioned the salmon and I'm going to talk about this really quick is I've got the biggest pieces on this one and the thinner pieces on this one. The bigger pieces are going to go to the top of the smoker because the top of the smoker will be a little bit warmer and so we'll need to account for that and also more smoke will be up there too. So by doing this, when I get halfway through, if it looks like they're smoking evenly, I can switch the two. But if they're not smoking evenly, I can just leave them as is, and this one will continue to get a little bit more smoke and heat. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and open the smoker here. And you can see here, the water tray. I have already added hot water to that. And look how convenient that was to load. I was just able to just slide that right off there, especially when you leave good spacing between your shelves. So next you'll see that I've already filled up the chip tray. If you want a more uh, a heavier smoke salmon, you're going to need to use something else to uh, put in smoke, like a cold smoke generator of some sort. And uh, I use the amazing smoke tray for that. Um, with this model and only having two shelves, it's kind of hard to do. So I'm gonna seal that up and then I'm just gonna go ahead and slide that in there. I pushed it all the way to the back and then I pulled it back away from the back about a quarter inch or a centimeter or so. That way there'll be enough space for good air pump. And then I'm just going to close it up. Now my target temperature is 160 degrees. I had it running dry, I mean when I say dry I mean without food and smoke chips, um, for about 5-10 minutes 
and it was just above 150. So we're gonna see if it comes back up to that temperature. We wanna run 160 degrees with salmon, the thickness of the salmon on the top, which is over an inch. We're probably gonna be running it for about six to eight hours. Six hours is probably your minimum. If you have less time and you wanna um, smoke it faster, you can raise your temperature up a little bit and do that. It will change your um, texture. I want it firm and dry, but I still want it to have like a moist kind of um, bite to it. I don't want it to be hard like a jerky, and I don't want it to be soft like, um, like a fresh salmon. And of course, we want it to be um, refrigerator stable, so I'm not going for um, shelf stable. I'm going for something that you'll need to store in your refrigerator. Anyway, let's go ahead and let this run, and uh, we'll come back to it in, it's probably going to be, like I said, about six hours. So, we'll see you then. Okay, so, it has been six hours, and I checked on it a little bit ago, and so it should be perfect now. So, um, we're just going to go ahead and open it. We're at temperature. I'm going to go ahead and unplug it. I'm I'm uh, positive that it's done. Okay, so again, my favorite thing about this is, is that I'm just going to take this right here, and I'm going to be able to just slide the whole thing right up on the tray, on the plate here, and then nothing will be messy or anything. A little crispy around the edges on that. Sugars were sticking a little bit to the uh, side of the smoker there. And these ones actually look perfect. Get a little bit closer here so you can uh, so you can see that. Now I'm going to go ahead and take this one right here, and I'm going to break it in half. Now. That's what I'm going for right there. You see, you can see that it's um, it's not uh, like mushy, it's, so it's cooked all the way through, but it's not hard. So if you look at the outside, it looks like if you look at the outside, like it might end up being hard, but it's really not. That's good, good flavor all the way through. Could have used a touch more smoke, um, but this is gonna go over really well with just about everybody. And also, the stuff that's a little lighter on the smoke makes really good um, salmon dip. If you just take it and chop it up and mix it with a little bit of uh, cream cheese and a little bit of milk, yeah, that, that's gonna be perfect. So anyway, so Smoke Hollow, electric uh, analog smoker, and uh, this is what you get. Um, the recipe is in the article linked below to how to smoke uh, salmon electric smoker. And um, I'm, I'm gonna go eat some smoked salmon. Thanks for watching. Oh, before I go, one more thing. The links below. Never put food in your mouth before you go to talk, but I forgot this. There's a link for the smoker. Links for the um, other things like the grill mats and wood chips and stuff that I used in there below. They are affiliate links, so if you do use them, I will uh, be compensated, and I appreciate it. Have a great day.